Formula One welcomed 2004 with its own unique blend of glitz and glamour. Once the launches were out of the way, the teams got down to the business of winter testing. Reigning champion Michael Schumacher has no reason to swap Rubens Barrichello for a new teammate. McLaren and Williams retain their strong pairings, but Ralph Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya have a radical new design on their hands to take the fight to David Coulthard, Kimi Raikkonen and, of course, Ferrari. Takuma Sato joins Jensen Button at BAR, while Felipe Massa returns to Sauber with Giancarlo Fisichella. Jano Trulli and Fernando Alonso are retained by Renault, while Cristiano De Massa and Olivier Panis remain on Toyota's payroll. Rising star Mark Webber is joined by Austrian Christian Klien at Jaguar, Formula 3000 ace Giorgio Pantano joins Nick Heidfeld at Jordan, while Zolt Baumgartner and Gian Maria Bruni complete the lineup at Minardi. And with Australia fast approaching, who's most likely to come out on top? I think it's no point to talk too much about it. Let's see him, mate. Australia plays host to a sun-drenched first race of 2004, and the PR machine is already in full swing. It's not all fun and games. The serious business of setting up is well and truly underway as the teams prepare their workplace for the weekend in Albert Park. But this is Melbourne and things are still very relaxed. As always, the drivers take up their positions in front of the cameras. But some are more comfortable there than others. It's not just the drivers who are lapping up the spirit. <laughs> it's fantastic. The weather's good, atmosphere's good. The best atmosphere you'll ever see in the world. The, the beer's good, yes, yeah, great. Good, it's your shout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who is everyone cheering for? Uh, show me. Weber. 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 Still Only Weber. Weber. The rest is mere detail. <laughs> Montoya, all the way, son, all the way. You know the Aussie saying, throw another shrimp on the barbie? <laughs> well, it's throw another shrimmy on the barbie this year. <laughs> Forza Ferrari! <laughs> New rules for this year restrict teams to one engine per car per weekend. Qualifying is still a one-lap shootout, but both sessions are on Saturday. The winner from the previous race runs first in pre-qualifying. Quickest car from that session runs last in qualifying, and fastest time takes pole position. Park Ferme and refuelling conditions remain the same. Single-lap qualifying is not new, but last year's winner, David Coulthard, is a victim of its unpredictability. He loses it in the final corner, leaving him 12th on the grid.
Michael Schumacher is rarely a victim of misfortune. A time of 1 minute 24.408 puts him in pole position once again at the Australian Grand Prix. Teammate Barrichello makes it an all-Ferrari front row, with Montoya and Button not far behind. Race day dawns, and the new season is imminent. Launch control is out, but any hope of Montoya chasing the Ferraris is gone in a flash of blue and yellow. Juan outbreaks himself and ends up on the grass and in eighth position. While Alonso sets about halting Michael and Rubens. But they're a dominant force at the front. This sight will not make Giancarlo Fisichella too happy. He may have swapped teams with Heidfeld, but he didn't join Sauber to study the rear wing of a Jordan. He tries pushing him to the limit, but Nick is not phased and holds his position. <laughs> Teammate Felipe Massa is having a ball attacking Kimi Raikkonen. Unbelievably, the McLaren is easy prey for the Sauber. While Kimi doesn't take it lying down, his car is not up to the job. A loss of water pressure causes his engine to fail and he becomes the first retirement of the season. Not the title that McLaren wanted. For sure we wasn't expecting to drive on 10th place and not going anywhere. It's for sure disappointing because we shouldn't be on that position. We should be fighting in the first place and uh, I think so no one is happy. Massa hopes his seat at Sauber could open the door to a drive at Maranello, but this spin won't impress anyone. Renault are keen to cut it with the big guys, and Jano Trulli is keeping one of the biggest at bay. He's been tipped as Michael's most likely nemesis, but things haven't quite gone to plan for Juan Pablo Montoya. Fizzy Keller and Heidfeld are in close company once again, but Giancarlo knows he has the quicker car and won't waste any more time behind the Jordan, no matter how close it gets. At the end of 2000, Williams dropped Button for Montoya, but it's the BAR that has the upper hand for the moment. There's pride at stake here. And the contest is really revving up. Montoya looks to have it easily. They're side by side, but Jensen keeps battling until he runs out of track. Montoya wins, this time at least. Wave blue flags were usually for Pantano's opposition in Formula 3000, but this is the harsh world of Formula 1 and something he'd better get used to. Third place to Alonso is a man on a mission. He can't hang around if he's to contend with the Ferraris ahead. Williams have not closed the gap on Ferrari. In fact, it's almost a lap difference when Montoya and Schumacher make their final stops. A clutch problem means Heidfeld's gap to his mechanics is non-existent. Fortunately, no one is seriously injured, but Nick's car won't go much further. Ralph had ambitions to go much further, but he's having a quiet race out in fourth. Michael's race looks equally peaceful, but Schumacher Senior has got the luxury of having everything under control at the front. DC is raring to go this year, but the McLaren doesn't exactly look fighting fit. He should salvage a point, but last year he secured 10. With the old school falling by the wayside, could this be the start of a new era? His challenges may have changed, but it's still Michael Schumacher who takes the flag for the first time this year and the 71st of his career.
Teammate Barrichello is second, making it their 16th 1-2. Alonso finishes a well-deserved third. Getting on the podium at the first race with the Ferraris certainly puts Renault right on track for the rest of the year. Ralph beat his teammate to fourth, while BAR set the foundations to begin their challenge of the top three. Coulthard took the final point, but McLaren have just won to Ferrari's 18. The weather conditions may have been favourable, but the team shows no signs of weakness. Were the drivers allowed to battle it out on track? No, we had a, a good uh, half of the race uh, fighting. I mean, the times were incredible. We were doing really good times and um, it, was, uh, it was just uh, exciting. We saw Fernando slowing down. Uh, we all decided to, to slow down the pace uh, a bit and uh, save everything you can because it's obviously new regulation. It's the first race in the season, so the confidence is there, but not uh, maybe as much as uh, if it would be the last race of the season. And therefore, you just save uh, everything as much as you can. If that was a conservative approach from Ferrari, the rest of the field had better watch out in Sipang. Malaysia offers a vibrant fusion of cultures and customs, east and west, and as ever, the atmosphere proves hot and sultry. But the sweeping circuit saw several drivers lose their cool in qualifying. Takuma Sato hits a bump and spins at turn 11. It could have been a good lap, but it leaves him with a lot of work on his hands. Another big name at the back is Fernando Alonso. He too was pushing hard, but a mistake at turn 14 sends his Renault into the gravel and leaves him in last place for the race. Michael took pole again, but he's joined by Mark Webber, who gets on the front row of the grid for the first time in his F1 career. It's threatened rain all weekend, and here it is, just minutes before the start. Giorgio Pantano falls foul of the one engine per weekend rule and opts to start from the pit lane rather than the back of the grid. The track is dry in places and damp in others. It's going to be a very exciting race. It hasn't even started and already Raikkonen's demonstrating some on-track acrobatics. Kimi recovers his position, but could it be a bad omen for his afternoon? Fernando Alonso will need every good luck charm going to get through from the back of the field if he wants to mix it with the Ferraris. Mark Webber has a slow getaway, elevating Montoya to third. But Jensen Button and Jana Trulli are set on a collision course. Alonso makes light work of the cars around him, and finally Webber sorts out his start line gremlins, but he's way down the field. Trulli gets ahead of Button. While Sato, who started at the back of the grid, makes progress at Heidfeld's expense. Michael is clear at the front, but Takuma is now hot on the heels of Massa, and Heidfeld's trying to get back in the action. And just in case this isn't enough, there's more rain, but only on parts of the track. Michael takes it steady, but Barrichello's harder compound Bridgestone tyres are not paying off in these conditions. He runs wide, allowing Montoya and Raikkonen to reap the benefits. Now, Juan Pablo is unleashed, he sets about catching the other Ferrari. <laughs> 